Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day on this really powerful feast, that of the evangelist St. Luke, and we lift up our hearts to you, that your name may be glorified, that all we do may offer to others the witness that we have of your glory, your truth, your love, that all may come to know the truth of the Lord. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, today is the feast of St. Luke, the feast of Luke the Evangelist, and obviously it's a powerful feast in the church, and it's one that we look at in understanding the truth that is of Christ. But the story is interesting, because even though we're focused on Luke, we also understand that this is also about evangelism and spreading the gospel. So when we look at the first reading, we're looking at notes from St. Paul to Timothy. And he talks about how, this St. Paul, how he was abandoned by all these people or they left. So there is Demas, who is enamored of the present world. By the way, I'm reading 2 Timothy 4, 10 through 17. So there's Demas, who, in other words, he walks away from the mission and he decides, he, it, I'm done. I'm done with this. And then he mentions Crescens and Titus. Uh, who also deserted Paul. So Paul is trying to bring this mission, and these people deserted him, probably because the mission was too difficult. And he mentions Luke, who we assume is the Luke of the gospel, and of the gospel writer. And Luke is the only one who remains, as he says. But there is another person who is mentioned in this uh, blurb, this pericope is the official word is, and it's Alexander the Coppersmith. And he says, Alexander the Coppersmith did me a great deal of harm. Now, we don't know anything about who Alexander the Coppersmith is. He may have been a Christian. He may have not been a Christian. But one thought of this is something that a lot of people forget about. And that is that there are certain local customs and certain local uh, actions that happen in a church or a, rather in a faith, in a community that affect the entire community. So here you have Paul who is out preaching to all the people and he's preaching about this man, Jesus. Now, Alexander the coppersmith may have been a follower, but it doesn't seem like that, so to speak, because Paul, primer, uh, before that, is talking about these followers who have abandoned him. So then he specifically mentions Alexander the coppersmith. And one thought was, uh, the focus being on the coppersmith part as opposed to the uh, Alexander part. And what that thought is this is that Alexander may have been designing copper figurines of the local pagan gods. This is, this is a precedent that happens from time to time, and I'm going to talk about another example of it. So when Paul comes and preaches on the true God, who is Jesus Christ, who comes, who died, who rose, guess who's going to lose money? And guess who's going to lose his way of living, which in a sense, he is a right to, well, in a sense, he is a right to, he, he clearly does. But obviously, it, it, you know, here is this clash, uh, possibly on an economic level of our faith. So Paul is teaching him the truth. Now, always understand this, and I know uh, some people don't comprehend this word, but I'm going to explain it to you. The word is evolution. Now, a lot of people get upset when they hear the word. Any kind of dispute over evolution happens to deal with biological evolution. And you know where I stand on as a Catholic about biological evolution. Any other form of evolution is quite apparent in the Bible. You have this growth of understanding. So what happens is Paul is going out and teaching a whole new understanding of the cosmos as we see through this man, Jesus, who died for our sins and rose to eternal, rose that we may have eternal life, something that is different than you will find in all the other 
gods from the Greeks. And so he is teaching people the unknown god, which we learn from Acts. Now, if Alexander the coppersmith happens to make money on selling figurines to all these other gods, and people are now going to listen to the god uh, of Paul, who's going to lose money there? First of all, Paul's not going to lose money because he's not going to gain money. He made that very clear. He was a tent maker. That's what he did. And so it's not going to be Paul. It's going to be Alexander the coppersmith. There is precedent from this that you can actually find locally, and I've talk, talked about it before, and that's at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, which had a, uh, which financed a lot of excavations in Egypt. And one of them was finding a pharaoh Akhenaten. And Akhenaten believed that there was only one God in ancient Egypt. And that was the rule he put out. There's only one God, and it was the God of the sun, meaning the sun in the sky. And that changed the entire economy in their, uh, th their religious dynamic in Egypt. And he died. He was buried in a distance away. And as soon as he died, they brought all the other gods back because there's an economy level there, too. And this is what we see in Alexander the coppersmith. We're going to talk more about this on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony Overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WEZE 590 AM. And you can also hear us at CatholicAudioMedia.com. That's CatholicAudioMedia.com. We'll be right back right after this. Do you know that you can put together an adoration chapel of your own in your own house? With concerns surrounding the coronavirus and social distancing, many miss the opportunity to pray before the Blessed Sacrament. However, with a little ingenuity, it is quite easy and you are not doing anything irreverent or illicit. Simply search Eucharistic Adoration Live on YouTube and several live channels in different parts of the world will pop up. Now you can engage in Eucharistic Adoration in your own home if it is not available in your local parish church. Eucharistic Adoration Live on YouTube. St. Anthony Parish, Alston, Massachusetts. And you know, my Chicadian rhythms change, as they all do for all of us during the year. And so I've been waking up more at five, and usually I wake up at six. So I go in the next room, and I look at exactly that adoration from uh, Illinois, from the Colby Shrine in Illinois, and I sit there and do my holy hour there. That's one of the things I do. At um, So that, that that's a very powerful thing. Add that uh, that form of devotion. In the meantime, do remember our website, catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. You can check out our website and do some shopping. Go to the shopping tab and um, kind of help our broadcast with that, including my new book, which is now at a discount. It's offered a little bit lower because it's it, it, it lower than it will be in the final because it gives you a chance to read it. Hey, send me comments. Father, this is what we think. We like, we don't like, the whole bit, and gives you a chance to do that. So you want to check that out, shopping at um, that. That's the tab and all of that at catholicaudiomedia.com. So we're talking about this powerful dynamic. So I, I just discussed with you uh, the Pharaoh Akhenaten, and you can go to the Museum of Fine Arts and learn more about it. It's, it's a real fascinating story. So here Paul comes in, and we forget these other dynamics. Now, some of the, the atheists might turn around who might be listening and say, see, that's what religion, all its economy. Well, really, if all of a sudden there becomes someone who is in charge of Russia, we'll say someone who supersedes Putin in the future and turns around and, and eliminates anything to do with Marxism, including Lenin's tomb and everything else, you don't think the same dynamic will play itself out? Oh, I'm sure it will. So as you see, this just happens to be a reality. It's part of our human reality. But also look at something else from this first reading. And again, we're focused on Luke, but it's still all about evangelization. And here, Paul is abandoned by everyone, as you can see, except for Luke. And he's going through this hard time. He's going through this great evil. He's going through all these things, you know, this great evil of trying to silence him. And it, it, it probably was a great temptation to him to walk away as well. And, you know, we're going through real stuff, real 
tough times as well. The church always does. And and I think it was Cardinal Burke says this is one of the toughest eras of the church right now. And I'm sure there are many people, there are already people who have, there are many people who just want to walk away, including uh, priests and even bishops to say, that's it. We're done. We've had it. We put up with enough. And they want to walk away. But notice something in Paul, his remaining is a testimony. So notice that there's something called white martyrdom. White martyrdom is suffering for the faith, but not dying. You, you, you'd, you'd wish you died, to be honest, but you're suffering for the faith, but you're not dying f- for the faith. I mean, in, in other words, you go through an extremely difficult time, as St. Paul did, but he didn't experience the ultimate martyrdom, martyrdom until he was in Rome. So all this experience, and many other people go, then the saints would talk about it as well, is what is known as white martyrdom. So there are people that may be experienced that we're done. We've had it. We've had enough. And that's what goes on with uh, those who abandon St. Paul's. Is we're done. You know, it's, we're going to walk down this road over here. We're going to just get back involved in the, ro- in the world, and we're done. And so Paul is abandoned by all these people. He has the trouble he had with Alexander the coppersmith, but his perseverance is what is the testimony. And so we can see that also in Luke. Now, Luke is the third gospel writer, which means you have the first one, Mark, the second one, Matthew, and the third one, Luke. They are what are known as synoptics. And then there's John, which is not related to the other three. So they're all very similar, synonym synoptics. That's where the word comes from. And so they're synoptics. And Luke, so each one adds a more better description of the situation. So we see that really powerfully with Luke, that reality, that synoptic reality that that gives us a more flowery and deeper understanding of what Jesus is teaching. And some would say it's more, uh, Father Rufus Pereira described it as the woman's gospel. It's really geared towards women. Well, if you heard, if what you heard today touched your heart, we encourage you to share today's podcast with friends and families so they can be enlightened as well. You know, our goal is to reach new listeners every day, and together we can make that happen. Thank you again for tuning in. We look forward to you tuning in to our next podcast, and we hope you have a blessed day. We hope this really helps you this day, and don't forget us at catholicaudiomedia.com. In the meantime, we'll see you tomorrow. You know, we have a website for our programs that will connect you to the parish, the blog, and to share your prayer requests with us. If you've been touched by our program, you can even show your support through your donation. We are at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's all one word, catholicaudiomedia.com. It is updated regularly with blog posts and podcasts of the program. So stay connected with us and tell us how this show has touched your heart, catholicaudiomedia.com. In Cristo vivimos.